move to the second section if you are not tired, um, which is about the Grand Ethiopian Resonance Dam. Um, I think last year I went through the process of negotiations and the steps starting from April 2011, start launching and announcing the dam in Ethiopia and then went through the IPOE, then the, uh, forming a technical committee for the negotiation, then signing the DOP later on, and then in September 2016, the countries were agreed uh, to involve the consultancies, and then the consultancies prepared the inception report, which was accepted from Egypt, and then in December, Egypt requested since this was not possible to proceed with the consultant, Egypt proposed to involve the World Bank, which was not accepted. In May 2018, the nine party decided the NISRG, the National Independent uh, Scientific Group, five from each country, scientists, independent, to sit together and try to come up with a solution. They came up with some principles which were not applied later on. In July 2019, Egypt handed over a proposal which was not accepted, then started the new process involving the uh, World Bank and the U.S. And then the World Bank and the U.S. supported the three country to, countries to draft uh, an agreement. In February, after six months of back and forth, traveling, meeting, negotiating all the technical and legal details, and then at the time of signature was not signed, was only signed from the Egyptian side. And then, uh, uh, then things are uh, stopped for a while. And then His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Sudan, invited the three parties to come and uh, resume negotiations. Then later on went to the UN Council and now under the process is under the, 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 the uh, African Union and it's still in the process. So one of the very important milestones of this process was the IPOE. I think the two milestones, at least for me as a person, the tangible IPOE, the International Panel of Experts, who wrote a very good report um, describing the situation, telling us as three countries, because they were two from each country and four independent uh, technical, and it was really, for me, it was a good process. They wrote a, a good report that's available online for anyone to read that was highlighting some issues I'm not going to explain because we have the right person to explain us more about the IPOE report. We have today uh, Dr. Passon from South Africa as a water resources specialist. Dr. Passon is a specialized in the management of water resources and hydropower systems on a regional and national scale. Um, he has done extensive work on transboundary river systems, so he is the right person for the topic we are discussing today in South Africa, and he worked on several large international rivers, such as the Indus, Mekong, and Zambai. Uh, Dr. Passon's involvement on the Nile stretches over 25 years with advisory roles for the World Bank, FAO, and UNDB. He is also a member of the panel of experts that I just mentioned, the IPOE, who was one of the key uh, uh, neutral experts covering the dimension of water resources. So he's the author and co-author of over 40 papers and several books, including a senior author of an, uh, a book on the management of water resources and hydropower systems. He is going to speak to us about the IPOE it's a quite old topic, but I think it's a very good deliverable and very good collaboration between the uh, three brother countries, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. Dr. Passon, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can you hear me? I'm sharing my screen with you.
A brief look at the composition of the IPOE. There were two members, uh, two members from each country, supported by their teams of experts, and as well as the international experts on environment, on socio-economic, on dam engineering, on water resources, and hydrological modeling. I think it was a well-balanced composition from a technical perspective, as well as from political representation. The objectives of the IPOE were not only to do technical reviews, but to build confidence amongst the three countries around the GRDP. Uh, they had to provide a sound review of the documentation and information, uh, and also assessment of the benefits to all three countries, as well as the impacts downstream to Egypt and Sudan. I think importantly, the role of the IPOE was not only to be uh, technical, but also facilitative to promote dialogue and understanding and to come up with solutions for any problems that uh, we encounter. The activities of the IPOE, uh, if we briefly look at that, they mainly consisted of the review of documents provided by Ethiopia and the dating of these documents. No external documents were considered only those provided by the, uh, uh, limited to those by Ethiopia. We uh, conducted six meetings or work sessions that extended over a couple of days each. And four of these were in Ethiopia, one each in Egypt and Sudan. We also had the opportunity to visit the GR, uh, GRD site each time that we had a meeting in Ethiopia, and as well as visiting Lucerus and Meroe. The process of documents review, to briefly touch on that, is that all IPOE members had equal access to all documents. And the members of the IPOE then submitted their comments and review notes to all other members. But these were distributed a few days before the working sessions and before the meetings. So everybody distributed their comments to everybody, not only the dam engineers, the dam engineers, and the sociologists and the sociologists. The, uh, at the meetings, the members then deliberated on these during the meetings and during the work sessions. In total, there were about 153 documents that were received. These include drawings, maps, and reports. The, uh, some of them were only one page, obviously. Then uh, the most important of these that were reviewed were two on environment and socioeconomics. One was uh, on the environment was focused on the uh, Ethiopian side and the GRD uh, dam basin itself. And the other one was it last boundary socioeconomics. Then three on water and hydrology and seven documents on dam engineering. The outcomes of the IPOE, the hard outcomes mainly consisted of a series of reports covering the findings and recommendations of the IPOE on the various documents reviewed. And then a final summary report, the contents of which were duly considered and signed off by all members of the IPOE. Important in this respect is thus, that for signing off by all the members of the IPOE, consensus or a compromise had to be reached on all the issues that came up. Uh, some of the issues were already addressed during the tenure of the IPOE, and these mainly related to the dam safety uh, aspects that uh, while the dam was still under construction and some aspects under design, uh, some uh, corrections could be made. Uh, and we also prepared outlines for further water resources and environmental studies, which were felt lacking by the IPOE. In total, overall, it was viewed uh, as a valuable document and I think a successful outcome for the workings of the IPOE. 
considering the key success factors, the, uh, first of all, political support for a process, and there was a will to succeed. We work towards finding solutions instead of just getting bogged down on the problems that encountered us. Uh, also, focus was on the technical and professional scope of work and focusing on the issues, not on the countries. Although, as Professor Biswas uh, very well pointed out, you know, the technical part is probably the easy part uh, and only an input to the political discussions that uh, need to follow after that. Although also focusing on the technical professional part, the, uh, the national interests obviously were of importance throughout. We also had the involvement of the international independent experts and the trust in their professional conduct. It often happened in various occasions that they could help to resolve some difficult issues. Uh, uh, not, and that brought the balance into the whole system. The, the national experts who were all very well acquainted in their fields and could understand the issues, but with the independent international issues to try and uh, mediate where necessary. <clears throat> then also the construction of the GRV was still at an early stage with uh, opportunities for improvement on certain aspects, particularly with respect to uh, aspects of uh, dam safety. Then <clears throat> compared to experiences on cooperation elsewhere, uh, I think the cornerstones for building confidence and cooperation are what we found elsewhere or where I was involved, very similar to the IPOE. And obviously, similar to good uh, political relations and understandings, as again, Professor Bisa pointed out. The, uh, some of these cornerstones were then the commitment and participation of the stakeholders, sharing of data and information. I think sharing of data and information is a, one of the key aspects. But that was also borne out by the early involvement of the FAO, FAO uh, on the development of a database for the Nile River Basin, the World Bank's Nile Basin Initiative, and the uh, decision support system developed by the uh, uh, UNDP or our auspices of the UNDP. So without sharing of data and information, there's really not much for the to discuss. And then a combination of the internal and external uh, technical and professional experts, as it is already mentioned, I think that was essential to the building of understanding and trust. Continue on the experience elsewhere <clears throat> is that the joint technical studies uh, can serve as an objective base for creating understanding, trust, and cooperation. Important to share benefits and to mitigate negative impacts. And the benefits are much wider than water, as was pointed out by Professor Van Beek as well. Uh, not water is obviously important, but there is much that can be done around water. Then there needed to be an active coordination mechanism. The uh, uh, and in this case, the IPOE, I think, served as a good as a good coordination mechanism with regular meetings and interactions. We also found in other involvements that there was abundant evidence on benefits of the cooperating of the cooperative uh, operation of systems uh, and of large uh, infrastructure storage facilities. In South Africa, for example, we found that more than 10% or greater than 10% increase in the utility to be gained from the resources by operating them in a systems context than operating them independently. The current situation on the GRV cooperation is that there was actually no formal feedback after the May 2013, after the conclusion of the uh, <coughs> uh, IPOE. Though there were general information that several stumbling blocks uh, were encountered since that time. Items that I think are currently of importance, and uh, that's also in the general information that we, that we gain, is sharing of the final design documentation. 
there were a number of issues outstanding that needed to be addressed and needed to be shared amongst the three countries. Then obviously the release capacities during construction and, and emergencies, particularly now that uh, the filling, first filling of the GRD is uh, uh, starting to commence. Uh, there was uncertainty about what the release capacities were. were. Uh, these were to change during construction and also during emergencies, unlike during normal operation, operations when power is generated, uh, there's less of a problem with release capacity. Then, of specific importance, also pointed out by uh, Professor Van Beek, the filling and operation of the GRD and in the context of the Eastern Wall system, not only as an individual dam, but in the context of the overall system. Uh, this goes along with the power production and transmission planning. Uh, looking back, perhaps the continuation of the IPOE or of a IPOE could have been a good idea to continue. And then just a few pictures. This was the uh, construction site, GRD site, at the beginning uh, of construction in uh, 2012. And the next one is a picture of the members of the IPOE and the support. Somebody absent here is uh, Dr. Berry, and he was a photographer. Thank you. Your <coughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, just was an update, a good update about, uh, not update, reminding us of what happened the IPOE. Um, you asked about uh, formal feedback. Um, speaking on behalf of myself, I know I'm not representing any organization here, neither in Egypt nor in Germany. I don't see and I didn't hear about any formal feedback regarding the safety of the dam. We heard that Ethiopia has considered the, the recommendations of the IPOE, but there is no level two design that was received um, from the Ethiopian brothers. So just giving you a quick feedback. 